All right, got quite a few requests for this one. I used a couple little subtle tricks. This is super, super simple VJ loop. If you want to see the, if you want to see the loop some more, you can head over to my Instagram. It's right here. It's kind of a low quality preview here, here on my computer, but you can go if you have a mobile device. You can go check out. This is my account. You can see my other work and send me your work. So let's get into the tutorial. So we're going to be using Blender 2.8. Let's hit Shift A and let's go ahead and add a cylinder. Right now, here on the vertices, we have 32, which makes it that circle. Let's bring it all the way down to three, now making it a triangle. We're going to hit R, X, 90. And then we hit S, Y, 8. Scales it by 8. Now keep that in mind. When we start animating the camera, that's going to be really important to make it loop. Let's hit Tab. Let's go over here to the face selection. And we're going to hit this one, hold down Shift, hit this one, hit X, and faces. So now we have, really quickly, we have this really little triangle. This is pretty much going to be the whole loop. So let's hit tab, hit A to select everything. And we're going to go over here to loop cut. And we're just going to click once right here in the middle, right down here in this drop down on number of cuts. I'm going to go in here so I can eyeball how I want it to look. So number of cuts, we're just going to add maybe, so it looks like for me 26 loop cuts looks good. And we're going to hit go out of edit mode. So now we have all these loop cuts, which we're going to add a wireframe to now. But first, control A and apply scale to it so the wireframe is an even distribution. So let's go over here to the modifiers, add a wireframe here, and let's go ahead and bring your thickness up just a little bit. Now let's hit Shift D on this and let's remove the wireframe. And then right here on transform, we're just going to scale it up just a little bit. Right about there looks good, so take this one on the X, control C to copy that. And then we're going to paste that into the Y, control V. And now we have this around here, and this is going to be reflecting all the lights that happen within the, our wireframe. So let's take our wireframe and up the thickness. We don't want to make it too thick because then the lights will be too much, but I think I think this thickness probably works maybe a little bit more, but that looks about right. Now we're going to apply this. Now keep in mind, once we apply it, you can't change the thickness. So you might have to redo it if the lights are too much, but I believe from my last time doing this, this is the thickness that I want. So I'm just going to apply the wireframe and now it is a solid object. So now we're going to actually apply those lights so you can kind of see as you can kind of see, they're sort of placed randomly, and that's not done in the nodes or the procedural shading. That's done in selecting random vertices with a really cool trick. So go to your face select, select that. Right up here, go to select, select random, and you can use this percent bar to select how many you want to select. And if you don't like these, you can click random seed, and it picks random ones. Unfortunately, you can't animate this random seed. That'd be really great but can't do it, so I'm going to take my percentage. And I think this looks really good. I'm going to go on this random seed and just click around. I really like this placement. Maybe bring the percentage up just a little bit more. So go out of tab. We're going to add two materials. First, we're going to add the standard metallic material and make it fairly dark so the lights don't get too reflective. And then we're going to add a blue emission shader. So right here where it says surface, Go to emission and let's go to strength of 20 and give it a bluish color. Now go back to tab. So all these vertices are selected. Make sure your new material and click assign. So now it'll assign all the yellow ones. And if you go to look dev, so if you go into EV, now you can see them glowing. Now if they're not glowing, I get a lot of comments on this. It's because your EV settings are not turned on. So right here, the most important one, at least in these two, is screen space reflections so you want those reflections and also bloom so turn on those all right now let's go ahead and do another set of random selections so do that again select random and let's do the random seed until I like the placement I think right about there looks good let's go ahead let's add a new material new make it emissive and let's give it a strength of two right now and we'll give it a kind of a cool looking red and assign. So now we have sort of a pinkish. Now this you can always change. So I'm going to bring it 
maybe this red. And in our world settings, it's really gray. It's adding some light to the scene, so we don't want that. Bring it all the way black. And now we have this. All right, now let's take this outside triangle here and add a simple sort of mirror shader to it. So new, make it metallic, and bring the roughness all the way down. Now we have this crazy mirror look. Everything's too much, and that's because of the bloom. So go back to your EV settings on bloom, bring your bloom down some, and then also on your color management, you can go from high contrast to very high contrast, and then bring down your gamma, and now you have really good contrast and super really cool reflection reflections. Now let's go ahead and add our camera. So right here, add the camera, hold down control and bring it all the way to here. So that the anchor points at the beginning, if you want to know where it's located, right here on negative eight. And then on the rotation, I'm just going to give it night 90 zero it looks like zero. So let's go back to the view rendered view and let's go to the camera and I'm going to make my lens pretty wide go from 50 to say 30 perfect and I'm just going to preview how it's going to look that looks about right in hindsight I would have made the wireframe even thinner but as for the tutorial we're just going to keep it here for now you guys understand what's going on but I would change that and make it look a little bit better and then I'm going to take this triangle here on the outside I don't like how close it is don't like the reflections what they're doing now so I'm going to take this one bring it out and then copy that and paste it into the Y and so you can make it you can widen that out and keep it there but you want to keep it exact so everything loops correctly and then and then here on our blue material I'm gonna bring it down to a strength of 10 maybe less maybe right about there looks really good okay so now we have some nice color last thing we need to do is to animate our camera so before we do that go to your preferences here on the edit preferences and make sure that in the animation your inner your default interpolation is set to linear so let's click on our camera go to the transform settings on the Y hit the keyframe right here on end I'm gonna give it a hundred and twenty frames right down there I'm gonna click this arrow go to the very end and then click the right arrow to skip a frame so you want to make sure to do that so you don't have a duplicate frame when you go back to the beginning and then click go from negative 8 to 8 and that brings you all the way to the end of the model which is why when I hit S8 by scaling the model by 8 we know exactly what's going on rather than just scaling it to some random number so that animated it you can see it happening all we have to do now all we have to do now is take these two models here so hit B select them hit M new collection and just title it something random doesn't matter and then hit shift a collection instance and we're gonna hold down control so that it snaps bring it to the end hit shift D and what I'm gonna do is just duplicate a bunch of them and the reason why we're using instances is because we have a lot more objects and sometimes array modifiers kind of mess up when you're trying to instant thing instance things they don't fit into the grid instancing just keeps everything in that grid actually in the grid so they're just better to use and they don't add and they don't add anything to the scene so no faces so you have the same so you have the same amount of faces that you had before you duplicated all this but it does some math and it just it's an instance rather than a copy and now if we watch the animation we can just watch it go through and if it loops correctly there we go that little glitch you see that's just a, a viewport problem when you actually export it you won't have that last thing if you want to add some motion blur to your scene you can go down here in your EV settings go here in the EV settings and add some motion blur and it really adds some special look to your render and there you go now last thing we need to do is actually export this so you go up here to the printer icon right here you would select where you want to uh, save your animation right here on PNG change it to FFmpeg on encoding go to mp4 medium to high quality and there you go you would render render animation so there you go you made a really cool sci-fi render you can have some fun with it 
and thanks for watching.